Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Most of us have heard the old proverb, one man's trash is another man's treasure. What the proverb is telling us, in short, something that one person considers worthless may be considered valuable by someone else. And that is exactly what my guests aim to exploit, the world of reselling. Now, I am not going to get into the world of reselling sneakers. Not going to lie, I have a love-hate relationship with the sneaker reselling world. Some would call it a love-hate passion. But the idea of reselling is quite ingenious, and dare I say, entrepreneurial by nature. Let's review some of the pros and cons of reselling, some from my own experience. First, the cons. Competition. In some spaces, like the sneaker world, you're going to find some level of competition. Every item you sell or service you provide will be commandized so you can be compared to dozens of resellers. What do you think Amazon, Wish, and StockX do? Speaking of, let's chat about the necessary evil that is Amazon. Whether using their fulfillment services or if you want to take the fight to Amazon, Bezos casts a long shadow over the resale community. Have a plan in place on how you want to collaborate or not with services like Amazon, Wish, eBay, OfferUp, and others. Risk, like most business ventures, needs to be considered. Price and availability can fluctuate. Remember when Bitcoin was selling at $63,000 a share? Me too. That's why I sold my shares and now Bitcoin is trading around $30,000. Do not get caught holding bricks, my friends. A good distribution partner can help balance some of the risk on the entrepreneur's behalf, but they cannot fully eliminate all risk factors. One of the biggest things every entrepreneur needs to think about, resell or not, including myself as a host of this podcast, value. How important is value? My goodness. Imagine trying to sell a laser disc player today. Does anyone even know what a laser disc player is or am I dating myself? Okay, back on track. Value. I cannot stress the importance of a reseller or any business to prove value to customers, including myself. I'm working on ways to provide even more value to my listeners. I want the listeners to come away from this show feeling inspired feeling creative, feeling that I have never failed a day in my life. I have either succeeded or I have learned, and I will try again. None of that can be provided consistently on the cheap, but value is also very important to have your consumers returning. But what about the pros to reselling? In my experience, it is pretty dang simple, and sites like OfferUp and eBay make it pretty easy to slang some unused items collecting dust at home. Anyone can do it, at the correct age, of course. And please, make sure you're selling your own items and not someone else's. Another pro? Exposure. This has been one of my favorite reasons for starting this podcast. Exposure. I actually asked a guest if they were interested in being on my show. Instead of declining my offer, they took to Twitter to say I shouldn't be talking about things I do not know about. Ouch. Listen, folks, I'm here to gain insight from the exposure of these entrepreneurs letting me into their lives. This is the same information and education I absorb while at Syracuse, but in a different medium. I am beyond thankful to the individuals that have come on my show and even more thankful for the former guests that send me their colleagues and fellow entrepreneurs to guest on my show. The welcoming I have seen in the Oregon entrepreneur scene, other than one tweet, has been beyond incredible. I want to help build our local community to highlight small business and services in our great state of Oregon to help let builders build a quote I stole from Colin Landforce. But if this podcast can also help inspire the future entrepreneur, then it has been more than worth it. Which leads me to the last pro I would highlight. Opportunity. Reselling an item, starting a business, or simply learning about a craft, business, or other is an opportunity. And sometimes these are opportunities some seldom have. Figure out how to do something well and how to scale it. And you can make very good money doing it. Fail and you'll grow broke. But again, that is the risk for every business. And that is the life of the entrepreneur. This podcast was edited by Modern Ally, the business for small businesses and nonprofits who want their graphic design, marketing, social media, video, and other media projects done right. Modern Ally has a passion for supporting community education and social rights. The best part, Modern Ally meets businesses where they're at and works to create custom packages and services that fit your business needs at your budget. 
Say goodbye to overpriced, unpersonal, and out-of-touch agencies and say hello to your newest ally. To get started, visit yourmodernally.com or you can follow Modern Ally on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guests are two best friends who turned a hobby into a business. From vintage homeware finds to fostering a community-based atmosphere for their customers, please welcome the founders of Pink Cloud, Ariana and Morgan. I am here with a combo, Ariana and Morgan, the owners of Pink Cloud. Ariana, how are you doing? Hello, I'm great. How are you? Good. Morgan, are you with me? Hey. How are you guys doing? So first, I'm going to have you guys introduce yourself. So Ariana, I'm going to start with you. I would love to just... uh, you know, introduce the world to who Ariana is. Yeah. So my name's Ariana. I'm from Idaho. You'll hear from Morgan too. She is as well. I honestly moved to Portland with dreams of getting a job at Nike. And actually two days after you've called us or emailed us to get us on the podcast, I was offered a job there. So now after a long time of (laughs) trying to make it happen, That's what I will be doing starting Monday. I've done a lot of combo of things the past five years, but all involving fashion and marketing and social media as well. So that's where I'm at right now. Nice. And Morgan, what about you? Donna said, I'm from Idaho. We met in high school of all places in Idaho. I'm a farm girl. Funny enough, where I'm at now is quite rent, but I met Uh, Ariana's there. I went to school in Portland where I did a double major in finance and marketing. Spent the past four or five years at a creative agency in Portland, which is kind of agency land, uh, Agency USA. I recently left Portland, though, to pursue my dreams of working in ballroom dance. Oh, nice. that's where I'm at. Yes, it's quite a difference, but I'm now based in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, which is a huge change, but I'm enjoying it. While you're there... Just, uh, you know, go Raiders. I'm a big Raider fan. Here, so here. You know what? Yes. Raider fans are die hard. Oh, and yes. I can see that here. <laughs> I'm your newest Raider fan. Perfect. I love it. And also Morgan's an amazing ballroom dancer. She won't admit it, but oh, I'm, is, I'm, so I'm, I'm just if, letting you know. You got to let me know because I, I want to go see you. it. <laughs> uh, I will definitely go watch. I would definitely go watch. So let's talk a little bit about Pink Cloud. So, Ariana, what I'm going to do, actually, what I'm going to ask you first is, what does Pink Cloud do? What is it? So, Pink Cloud, we are basically a duo, and we sell vintage home goods. And vintage is anything that is 20 years or older. So, it's pretty crazy stuff from, like, Y2K era. That's vintage now. So, that's kind of what we focus on is what's popular right now. So, we sell a lot of like Y2K era stuff and mid century modern. Also, a really big focus of ours is just community. So, in addition to selling, we're trying to make a comfortable place for our customers and make them feel like they're also our friends. So we kind of taken a different approach on selling and we want to make sure everybody feels like they're a part of something and not just purchasing a product. Nice. So Morgan, how did you guys actually establish this kind of company? Funny is I think Ariana and I always dreamt of doing something. Both of us have always kind of had on our mind that we're meant for more. And we've always wanted to just continue to do things to kind of propel ourselves become more and more and more. So at the beginning of the pandemic, Ariana and I were pretty bored. Um, We liked to thrift. We were trying to go to Goodwill pre-pandemic with our gloves and our masks. We were just finding a lot of amazing things. And we both have small homes, so we couldn't fit all of those things in our homes. So I mentioned to Ariana, let's sell it. (laughs) And we did. And that's how it really began. I also want to mention, though, I think it was born out of a need as well. 
we both needed other streams of income. Right. And I think that's okay to say, yeah. Yeah, um, we, we were thinking, how are we going to survive? You know, Ariana was looking for a new job. And also for me, it was thinking, how am I going to really get to live a life I love and have more expendable income to do my passion? We started it and it grew from there. Nice. And so like you kind of alluded to the reason, what we'll kind of dig into that a little bit. Why did you guys create Pink Cloud? We honestly just had a love for the product that we were finding. And we were like, wait, we spend all of this time finding these items that we don't have room for. Like Morgan said, why don't we just make it available for everybody else? We'll do the work because people don't always have the patience to sift through all these thrift stores and drive all over miles and miles just to find like one thing even. Sometimes we go out all day and we only get a handful of things. And then other times it's like the mother load. So we're kind of helping, (laughs) yeah, we're kind of helping people to avoid that whole process. And that ends up to be like what they're paying for. And they really appreciate that. And because a lot of time people don't have the time, like I said, and and they don't enjoy it. Actually, Morgan got me into thrifting. I would never set foot in a thrift store just because I'm very, I don't know how to put it. I just, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Yeah, but well, let's, let's, let's actually explain. Morgan, yeah. what is thrifting? Yeah, Morgan, <laughs> explain what? it. <laughs> sure, sure. You know what? It's so funny because thrifting is so cool nowadays. And I yes. feel like every time I go to the thrift store, I see high schoolers. And I think, wow, how amazing. Because when me and Ariana were growing up, it's like, you thrift? Huh, who are you? Thrifting is essentially going to all thrift stores in your area, looking for items, one that you like, one that could hold some value. And I mean, that's the essence of it, really. It's a big treasure hunt and it's fun. But like I said, it's not fun for everybody. So Pink Cloud really eliminates that searching for home goods or searching for home goods at Goodwill all day and just brings it directly to our our customers. Nice. Uh, Yeah. So how did you guys end up creating Pink Cloud? Did you guys just one day kind of go to the thrift store and, and you know, find an item like, you know what, let's just sell this? Because you kind of alluded to yeah, it, right? I, I feel like this is kind of where it started. I purchased this. Remember, Morgan, my Hager statue that I purchased and I was doing all this research on it. And then Morgan said, let's sell it. And I actually told her no. I was like, no, Morgan, I'm not going to do that. I'm not selling my precious <laughs> items. I'm like, I just think that's going to be too much work and blah, blah, blah. And then I was actually let go at the beginning of the pandemic. And that's probably <laughs> around the time when I was like, I need to do something. Maybe Morgan's right. Maybe I should have said yes. Again, Morgan mentioned how we always have dreams of like doing something more with each other. And we would call it, we would, we would scheme all the time. And I think I said to her once this, I think this is our first scheme that's actually worked. So (laughs) yeah. So honestly, it just started from liking something and then Morgan making the push to start it. Then me being let go. And then we just went completely full force. Yeah. It started Gabe with us kind of having a plan. Let's, let's go to Goodwill a couple of times. Let's get 20 items. Let's see if they sell. And it's low risk because, of course, when you're first, you know, you're shopping at Goodwill, if it doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. So we started there. Ariana, remember, we took a huge, we took like a full day. Yeah. We saw all of these photos. We planned um, like a legitimate photo shoot. Nice. <laughs> we planned it. It was fun. It was um, fun. But it really started from there. And we were thinking, oh my gosh. Maybe no one's going to buy anything. Yeah. Morgan you said know, to me, just, she said, what if we spent this entire day, hours and hours photographing all these things and all this time sourcing and nobody buys anything? And then she goes, at least we did something with one Saturday. <laughs> and you know, it's funny. The first items we posted started selling. So I think uh, there's a chance we got lucky, but there's a chance also that, you know, we just worked hard and, and it came to fruition, you know? Yeah. And you found a very unique niche, Mm -hmm. you know, actually Ariana, you've been kind of saying quite a bit about how Morgan's kind of been spearheading quite a bit. Right. So Morgan, I would love to kind of hear from you, your, your lust or love for entrepreneurship come and, you know, kind of wanting to get out and do these things that you're doing. 
1000% it came from my dad. So my dad is a farmer and he's an inventor. He's an innovator. He's an entrepreneur. He's always thinking how to make the world better, you know, through innovation specifically. So I'm consistently inspired by him. But I always have in my head, one, I never want to be comfortable. I never want to be complacent. I always want to be contributing more to the world. I think that's a good way to put it. I also think that when you are put in moments of of challenge or struggle, for me and Ariana, you know, Ariana had just lost her job. For me, I went to a very expensive college. I didn't have enough money. You know, I was barely, I was making it. Uh, That's it. I was eating and I was paying for my rent. But I wasn't able to dance, which is my number one passion. So when you're put in a challenge, you are forced to think creatively. And I kind of just have that spirit, you know. Yeah. Now I'm just con- consistently thinking out, you know, how can I think differently? Yeah, and that's that's a great message, you know, for the individuals that are listening at home, being willing to try different things, right? And having the wherewithal, like you guys are mentioning, starting Pink Cloud, not knowing what was going to do. How did it feel when you guys had that first customer buy something? Oh, it was so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about like what I would love to kind of hear what goes in because you kind of started talking about it, the photo shoot, but what all goes in to reselling a product? The first thing, of course, is going out and sourcing the items. And like I mentioned earlier, we could be driving around for hours and hours going all over. I normally just would go all over Portland, Beaverton, Tiger, Hills, like all over. You search for the items, you do the research as well. Like I always have my phone out when I'm in these thrift stores or estate sales and I'm like, is this actually worth something? Is somebody, Um, then we go home, we'll clean the items, we'll photograph them. Morgan's really good at photographing and I'm really good at customer service. (laughs) We, we do both together, but yeah, we do definitely help each other in that way. After we post the photos, we're constantly in contact with everybody that's commenting or messaging us. We give them the information and the pricing and things like that. Anything they want to know, shipping costs. And sometimes we work with people if they're really not um, able to afford the price that we list. So we really want everyone to be happy. And after we ship out the item which we also do all of our own shipping, we always want to follow up. And it's really flattering when customers post photos of their items when they arrive. And I think Morgan would agree with this. I think we're so lucky because we have the best customers ever. I think we're on our fifth customer Instagram highlight, which means we've had like over 400, almost 500 of our customers post what they've received from us. So I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Any other company? How many but, how many customers do you guys have? We have a lot. Yeah, we, we have, have a lot. lot. And I've thought about this. I wish we had started from the beginning, kind of tracking a, a it. list. Yeah. Yeah. And and the reason we haven't is because really this was a hobby for mm-hmm. us, you know. But Ariana, so good at customer service and you can see that because we will have people return. We have customers buying one to two times a month every month. Wow. Yeah. And that is unique. Yeah. Wow. While we don't have 30,000 followers, we have, you know, of the 6,000 people coming back just consistently. It's, it's really crazy. And we're so lucky. And a lot of it, you know, is, is kind of fostering the relationship. That is impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have some customers that we've never met before. They just randomly found us. They live in New York. They live in Texas. They live in LA. They've bought from us literally like 10 plus times. Wow. We've only been around for a year and we started kind of right before a big jump of other other Instagram sellers started to show up with with vintage homes. So we kind of beat the crowd just a little, little bit, but we just continued to make ourselves different and friendlier. And I don't know, it's it's hard to explain because we want to be friends with all of our, our buyers. So I think if they want the same thing in us, they just continue to come back. And it's just an awesome community. Well, I like to, and this is kind of an important message for those those individuals at home, is you you essentially are taking a hobby and creating a business yeah. plan, which is, you know, I think that's what the pandemic has shown a lot of individuals is a hobby can also become monetized if True. you if you truly love to do it, right? And that yes. then becomes a career. Yeah. And I definitely want to stress that 
your hobby doesn't have to be monetized. Like, yeah. yes. don't feel pressured. Like if you love to read, if you love to just go on hikes, like you don't have to feel like your hobby needs to be making money. But it just so happens that our hobby had the potential to make us money and we needed it at the time. So we made it work. That's a great message for those listeners. Now, let's talk about the difficulties. What were some of the hard parts about starting Pink Cloud that you guys have faced in this last year? And we can also talk about the pandemic because that's also another thing. But I would love to talk, talk about the startup. Morgan. Yeah. There's a couple things, and I've been thinking about them. You mentioned that sometimes this can become your full-time career. I think from the beginning, Ariana and I have considered this a side hustle and a hobby, and we don't necessarily want to, you know, have it be our career. And I think that's important to say. Um, We both have other careers we're super passionate about. And so I think the biggest difficulty probably for both of us is time management. These side hustles or these hobbies can take a lot of time and the ability to keep it very efficient so you can be spending your time elsewhere doing other things you love to do is so important. I, we've, we've faced difficulties. We've had some weeks where we make $30. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And also you know, remaining positive in those moments that seem bleak. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I told Ariana, oh man, we're done. Oh, (laughs) she does. She used to do this all the time. She'd be like, Ariana, I think we're done. We hardly sold this week. We got to stop. We got, I'm like, Morgan, (laughs) come on. Like, it'll be fine. (laughs) Just pull through. But you know what? What's always in my head and what's always in Ariana's head is listen. If we don't make money this week, I know I can't dance. Or I, and for Ariana, mm-hmm. if I don't make money this week, I can't make rent. Yeah. Or I can't do this. So remaining positive in those situations is so important, yeah. which is difficult. And that's why it's so amazing to have a partner that pushes you to keep going. Yeah, um, we're lucky that we've known each yeah. other for so long. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> a, and you know, it's kind of funny. You guys are making some excellent points because the game of entrepreneurship, right? It's not all about success. You know, there are some difficult times and wading through those waters and staying positive is very important because, you know, I always talk about this when you're when you're climbing up the corporate ladder, it's very important to reach down and and bring the other people up with you. Mm -hmm. Because one day when you fall down it, that hand might reach out to stop you from falling kind of thing. And so it's really humbling to hear that one, your hobby doesn't need to be monetized. And I think that's a great, great point. And then two, remain positive during some of these things because there are going to be some rough patches, Mm -hmm. right? Looking back on everything that you guys done, you know, looking at your guys' two, where you're at now, what advice would you give yourself or a younger entrepreneur that is currently starting their or thinking of starting their own business? So what I'm going to say I think is important for entrepreneurs 100%. It's important for me just as a human. And I wish I did this earlier, but I believe you should never take things personally, right? So especially when you enter the workforce, I've been told no so many times. Oh, I we both like have. Been, um, Ariana is a great. We've been told no. We've been underestimated. You will just sometimes feel like absolute crap, right? But the resilience to not take things personally, know it's never about you, know that your time is coming and really becoming comfortable with rejection, I, you know, and becoming so strong or so okay with yourself that the next thing that doesn't work out won't demolish you you'll consider it a learning experience and and be able to just remain true to who you are and remain true on your journey uh, remain you know on your journey without things taking you down I totally used to be a person that if things didn't go okay it would just take me down for days but now when I'm told no you know, brush it off and keep going. That's yeah. very well said. And I think that's also true in the world of social media. Oh, yeah. Right. Very much so. Because, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I started this podcast, you know, earlier this year. And uh, again, as a hobby, not making money off it, just something I love to do. And uh, 
I, you know, shared one of my contents and some random person, I had no clue it was, left very, very mean yeah. comment. I'm oh, like, oh, oh no. man, why do you not like me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and my buddy who owns a couple parties is like, listen, Gabe, if I took to heart every single comment that they said about us, we would be out of business a long time ago. Yep. And so that's, yep. that's very good to hear. Now, Ariana, I would love to hear from your perspective as well, kind of what advice you would give yourself. Um, yes. Well, so similar to what Morgan was saying, I've been told no a million times. Like I said, I've been trying for five years to get a job at Nike and somehow I was still pursuing it and it finally worked out. So I would just tell my younger self or anybody that's starting out, just don't give up because a lot of people do. And then they end up in careers that they're just like not happy with or like a backup plan. And you want to make sure you're doing everything you can to meet your full potential. And so really, you just can't give up. Just put everything you have into what you want in your future and it will work out. And people see that. People see if you are working hard and they want to be a part of it, you know? Like, for example, uh, when we first started, we thought we weren't going to get any followers. It was all about followers. And, you know, it really just takes somebody to take a chance on you as well. That's something I've really learned. And we're really, really lucky because we have some amazing, absolute ride or die customers that are also pretty well-known influencers in like beauty and lifestyle and they are just absolutely fabulous and they will repost us all the time and then their followers come to us um morgan um i think fashion lush probably is one of our best ones right erica shout out to erica she's yeah. amazing she's getting married in a couple of weeks congratulations um, erica yeah it's <laughs> been so amazing to us and we have a few others just like her that have just been so amazing and supportive and I think something that we are really lucky is a lot of our customers are also really amazing business women. So it's so great and really important to surround yourself with people that encourage you and make you want to do better. And it will just put you in a headspace where you're like, oh, I can do this. Definitely. So. And you know, that's kind of how we connected, right? Yeah. You know, Geo, shout out yeah, to Geo yeah. and Coffee <laughs> Feed out there on Instagram. That's kind of how we connected. Now, from a business perspective, you know, younger entrepreneurs, you guys have been doing this for about a year. Mm -hmm. What is something maybe you guys learned within this last year that you would love to have known or maybe want to let an entrepreneur at home know that, hey, watch out for this landmine or be mindful of this? What is something that maybe you guys learned this last year? Morgan, I'll start with you. Sure. I think we've always been really weary of our cough. And Ariana is really good at this. She says, Morgan, you know, let's be careful. 100% when you're starting a business, be weary of where you're putting your money. Mm -hmm. Because I think we found in the beginning, we'd see these people with this beautiful packaging, right? And we're like, oh my gosh, like, should we be doing that? You know, we found, you know, with, with time that our customers didn't care about that as much, you know? So thinking about where can my money go the farthest with us, it was finding better items, being able to talk to them more um, and not just piling on the expenses for a fancy tape fancy cards and these other unnecessary things that can really take down your profit. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be so careful with that because sometimes, you know, we've had weeks we, we underestimated on shipping, for example, and it took 50% of what we were making. Ooh. Yeah. So um, you just have to be very wary of costs when you're starting a business, especially when you don't have the luxury of, of losing lots of money yeah. like, like us. Ariana, you have anything to add? Yeah. I think that's been the biggest thing. Oh, it's yeah. Very weird. Of Definitely. And do your research because like Morgan said, shipping was really difficult at first to estimate. And we kind of got to the point where we had to be like, okay, we need to actually weigh things and we need to <laughs> do all that. So do your research. Get the right materials. Don't go places that sell things for really expensive. Do your research and get bundles and you'll have, maybe you'll pay more up front, but it's cheaper in the long run. Yeah. So do your research, pay for the right things. Don't overpay if you don't have to, because you most likely don't need to spend that much for be, be our area. To be scrappy. You know yeah, what I mean? Scrappy. Be, be scrappy if you need to. There's been times I need boxes, so I go to the dumpster. Yep, me you know too. What I mean? <laughs> There's a million people putting brand new Amazon boxes in there, so I will take them and I 
and proud to do it. You know what I mean? So don't ever feel like you're less than because you have to be scrappy. Yeah. Um, Great advice. Yeah. Do just do what you got to do because you can't look at these. We laugh. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll send Morgan <laughs> pictures of my apartment's dumpster full of boxes. And I'm like, Oh God, I wish I could take all just, these, just but I got to go over somewhere. cardboard boxes. Yeah. Oh my God. Those are so sexy. <laughs> yeah. It's so <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, this person is giving away peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> this is gold. <laughs> like, that makes my week. You yeah. know, so. <laughs> don't, and don't look at a company that is super established, that's been around for years, and be like, why am I not there yet? It doesn't happen overnight, yeah. you know? So don't let that get you down. We Rome can, was not built in a day, exactly, people. Exactly. Like, we can look at these companies that, are now having collaborations with huge brands and we're like, why isn't that us yet? But maybe it will be one day. Yeah. I think it could be right, Morgan. I think <laughs> that it could, could be. be us. People really get discouraged, but it's really important not to. Nice. So how can the listeners at home find pink cloud? Where are you guys at on social media? How, how can they buy some of your items? Sure. You, know, you can find us on Instagram only at pinkcloud.co, right, Ariana? Mm-hmm. Is yep. that it? That's okay. <laughs> um, so basically we have all of our items posted there. Uh, we do some story highlights twice a week, time permits, and DM us if you're interested in anything. We love to also go out and search for things if you are wanting something that happens quite often. And it's all there. Awesome. Yeah, we can start talking. You yeah. can be our, our next customer slash friend. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that once the wife sees your items, she's going to be like, ooh, I need that and that and that. We just did the kitchen, so yeah, she needs to fill it up. Doing a remodel, you need some <laughs> things great. to go in the house, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Morgan, Ariana, thank you so much, Pink Cloud. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.